Hello, Todd Bog here with Breaking Stream, and welcome back to a new Let's Play of Conquest of Elysium 5. Uh, this one is going to be pre-recorded, which is unlike our other ones, which are done kind of uh, uh, on the fly each day, uh, so that I can incorporate your comments and such into the, uh, the broadcast, as it were. Um, in this case, I'm doing the pre-recording because I'm going to be taking a little trip and we'll be uh, away from home for a bit, so I won't be able to do my recordings like that as normal. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to choose a class that is a little more straightforward and allow us to uh, take advantage of this pre-recorded session type. And I'll probably be doing these back to back as well. So you'll see, uh, uh, you know, it'll be regularly scheduled out and everything. So it'll look like a new series, like a new series, like usual. However, I, I just won't be able to interact with you guys and incorporate that into the gameplay. I'm still going to be answering your comments. So definitely drop those in the uh, comments section below um, and you know I'll be happy to answer what's going on um, and any other questions that you guys might have so and as always if you're enjoying my daily content for Conquest of Elysium or any of the other stuff on the channel please uh, hit that subscribe button um, and then you know drop that like as well so all right so we're gonna start our new game and we're gonna do our standard thing which is a large map we're gonna choose monarchy and I'll explain the why in just a bit some of you may already know going to hit battle reports as well. That's an, a useful one uh, there. Uh, as always, this playthrough will be beginner friendly and uh, will be played to completion. So well, one way or the other. Uh, so we're at this screen. So one of the new things in the recent patch is that instead of having to uh, go through and change each of these, uh, you can just hit the plus key. And boom, we're at my count difficulty for the whole group. So this way we can get the, uh, the difficulties done, uh, saves us a bunch of clicks, which is great. Um, so we're gonna be doing our, uh, you know, our playthrough as a Baron. Um, so the Baron's a pretty straightforward class and uh, definitely one of the beginner friendly classes, uh, just because of the forces that you get, the strength of troop and everything like that. So, uh, so Barons are traditional humans through and through but they get access to a lot of well-trained uh, elite uh, human troops that you wouldn't get for other forces. So definitely useful. Um, we got knights, you've got uh, heavy infantry, and then you've got siege weapons uh, galore. So um, one of the interesting things they do is uh, basically a conscription, a levy. Uh, all farms and villages under our rule send a levy of soldiers to the Baron's castle each year. Uh, it consists of simple spearmen from farms and at least one knight from each village. Large towns and cities do not contrib contribute soldiers, so that's something to keep in mind. We can also form local militias to defend villages and cities. The larger the settlement, the stronger the militia. So, so that's all really good. So we start in a well-fortified castle. We get bonuses to gold and iron. Conscription yields soldiers from settlements and ancient forts once every year. And the Baron and High Lord can raise levies in villages and towns. And we receive free units from guard towers, which that is a new thing. So that's really cool. Uh, so yeah, the Baron's pretty straightforward. Um, so that's who we're going to choose here. Uh, we got our AI opponents. I always do unique random opponents to give us a better chance of seeing some cool classes. We'll see what happens with that. So um, with that, we're going to go ahead and jump in. And old Todd Bog the Baron will uh, jump into this world. All right. So this is our starting area. As you can see, we've got a, a number of starting spots. We get a hamlet and two farms, which is a few more than other races get. Um, that's pretty cool. Uh, we're starting near a coal mine and a coastal hamlet, so there's got to be water near there. <coughs> we start with ourselves, so we'll go ahead and look at us. Um, so we'll talk about our stats here real quick for the beginners. Um, we got hit points, obviously very useful because that's how you live. Uh, you, any damage you take goes to the hit points. 17 is a good amount of hit points for, uh, for a man-sized unit. Uh, armor is a reduction to damage, so the more armor you have, the better. In this case, uh, we're blocking three damage from every attack that comes at us. That's a normal attack. Uh, so that's really good. Um, and that makes it really tough for troops to fight. And we'll show why. Uh, he's got himself a magic greatsword. And the damage he does is 1 to 12. That plus 3, then, what, at, what it does is instead of adding to the roll, it makes the die bigger. So it's one of the, the harder things to wrap your mind around. But once you learn that, um, it becomes a lot better. Just imagine that every time you're rolling a die, no matter what size die, it's always one to whatever the maximum die is. So in this case, one to 15. So it's a 15 sided die. And that's how you do your damage. Uh, damage is important and I'll demonstrate why later. We got some abilities here. Um, if you ever want to see what they do, you can right click and see what they do. But of the stats up here right now, the only ones to really worry about are your hit points and your armor. 
uh, the others are more situational for sure. So uh, this right here will give you a good evaluate, evaluation of the quality of troop you've got here. So, um, so that's us. Uh, we have special powers though, because we're a baron. So this is the reason why we chose the monarchy is because we can find a king's castle and proclaim ourselves king of Elysium. So that's a special thing. I didn't get to do it with my last Baron playthrough, so I'm going to focus on that in this one uh, to kind of explore that and see what that does because I haven't done it before. So, And then we have some powers. Raise levies, that's what they were talking about. Uh, so we can jump on a place uh, that's anything that's larger than a farm. And uh, we hit this button and it'll make levies appear. So they'll, uh, they'll pop up and you'll have access to uh, free defenders that can't move from there, but uh, we'll keep animals and other small things off of there. We have Swift Justice, which if there's a brigand lair, we can convert it uh, so that it no longer produces brigands. It will instead uh, become a uh, gallows. Um, in other words, cleaning up the world a little bit. So just a neat little thing. Um, takes care of the brigand problem forever. Um, we can raise forts. So anything that is a hamlet can be turned into a fortification and it produces more gold. So raising forts are definitely useful. Does cost some gold though. Uh, this is a new thing for them. They can appoint vassals. So when you have a hamlet, you can or a, a hamlet converted over to uh, what they call the the Mott and Bailey. Um, it's, oh, it actually says it on there. It doesn't. Yeah, Mott and Bailey. Um, <coughs> you can actually instead of getting troops from it every levy, which I'll, I'll explain in a little bit uh, when that comes. Instead of getting troops from it every uh, time, you instead make it independent. They get more troops instead uh, for them specifically, and then basically they're going to roam around the local area and take out uh, local uh, wildlife and local enemies as well. They're going to try and do what they can to, uh, to keep your area under control. So very cool. And then Relocate Manor, um, that one's a new power as well. Um, normally you get conscripts every year based on what you own uh, human f uh, uh, among the human population and uh, those conscripts will appear in your castle. Used to be you couldn't change where that was. Sometimes your castle was so far away from the battlefields that getting those forces up took time, so it was a long delay. Now if you take over another castle, you can turn that into the focal point and all your troops will appear there as well. So, so once I get that king's castle, that's probably what'll happen because that's usually in a more central location. Anyways, we also have ourselves uh, High Lord. High Lord moves faster because he's on horse, um, so uh, he'll actually move faster in combat, and you'll see what that means later. He's got three attacks. Uh, the lance charge is good, but it's only once per battle. Uh, but the other two are, are solid, um, and he's got himself three armor as well. So, And a shield. <coughs> so shields uh, block a random amount of damage, 0 to 1 in the case of a regular shield. Uh, against ranged weapons, though, they can block 0 to 2. So uh, better uh, at ranged attacks, which is something new to the series. Um, so you've got the armor, you got the shield, um, so this guy can block three to four damage from every attack. So what does that mean in terms of regular troops? Well, this is our normal troop. This is what I consider the baseline troop, and I think a lot of people do too. Spearman is your, uh, core troop. You're going to see this, the most common troop type, uh, throughout the, uh, Elysium series. Um, uh, so this has no armor, has a shield, so it blocks zero to one damage. Um, so it can block zero to one damage total has six hit points. That's about standard for uh, for most troops of this size. And then uh, it's got itself a spear. So initiative is uh, what when you attack. So everything goes in initiative order, starting with highest to lowest. So the spear's got a pretty good initiative, but it only does one to four damage. So against other spearmen, that'll be good. You know, they'll be fighting it out. They'll duke it out. And, uh, you know, eventually one side will win, usually the one with more spears or the luckier rolls. Um, but as you can see, against a guy with three armor, um, you know, 75% of the time, this is just doing no damage. Um, and then if you roll four, uh, that actually triggers what we call an open-ended die roll. Uh, so instead of just doing one to four damage, if you roll at four, you uh, max the die, essentially. Um, you can then re-roll the die and subtract one from the result and add it to your damage. So if you roll this four, you're doing four damage plus your die roll minus one. So if you roll four and then a three, you're doing a total of six damage. Um, however, that can keep going and going. So theoretically, the, the Spearman could do 1,000 damage. Um, but statistically speaking, it's very rare. But this allows you to overcome higher armor and stuff like that. So it's never like a purely safe fight you know, when it comes to just a high armor uh, versus a low armor. So that being said, uh, we got ourselves a nice little army here. The Spearman, the Cavalryman uh, has a broadsword. Um, so they do 1 to 7 damage. Um, remember that plus 1 goes to the top number. 
And then a lance charge uh, for 1 to 10. That's, again, 1 per battle. Um, and they've got themselves two armor and a shield, so not as good as our lords, but pretty darn good. And then you got longbows, so they got a range of six. That's really good. <coughs> your uh, baseline, uh, like your standard spearman is your standard melee unit, your baseline is a regular bowman, not the longbowman. They're a range five, and they do one to three damage. So this guy has a plus on both of those. Fantastic and very, very good. Um, I love longbowmen, um, so they're, uh, they're pretty solid, so... So yeah, we got a pretty decent starting force here. It's standardized, so it's not like it's randomized or anything like that, so you don't have to worry about that, but... All right. Recruit-wise, um, so we're gonna do a long right-click, and that lets you recruit at the specific spot you right-click on it. We only have one right now, but eventually this can span, you know, 15, 20 locations, and that's the best way to determine you're getting in the right spot. Anyways, so this is a lot of troop types to, to recruit. Uh, it's can be daunting at first, but there's a few things to note. Spearmen, we talked about. Swordsmen are just slightly better spearmen. They have one extra armor, and they do a little more damage uh, at a lower initiative. So, so they do two. They can have. Uh, they do two extra damage, um, on a uh, two extra max damage, and then with the armor, they're a little more survivable. But they do take iron, which is another resource that we'll have to acquire. Crossbowmen are great. They do one to five damage, only range five, so they're a little less than our longbowmen. However, they do it every two rounds. So, in other words, uh, you can fire your longbow twice for every shot from the crossbow. But these are still pretty good because of that extra damage uh, for high armor targets, for sure. But um, longbowmen are going to be great for, for overall. Heavy infantry are fantastic. They're two armor. Eight hit points, so they get slightly more hit points. They definitely have more armor, and then they have a bigger shield, which can block zero to two damage, and then zero to four against range. Fantastic for siege work, um, or just if you need durable troops, because uh, they block two to four damage per base. And then um, they've got their broadsword for one to six, so they do the same damage as swordsmen. The one downside is they're slow, which means they're harder to move around in the world map, um, and I'll demonstrate what that means later. Longbowmen we saw. Um, the thing to note here is you only get four longbowmen with a recruit, whereas you get five with the crossbows. So that's one thing to keep in mind uh, where the crossbows might be better um, if you need extra numbers for an initial volley. Um, but overall, longbowmen are just the better value overall uh, in my book. Uh, Pikeneers are basically one armor. Uh, so they're like swordsmen without the shield, and then they do one to five damage, but they can do it up to two squares away. So, uh, yeah. And then halberdiers are like swordsmen without the shield, but they do 1 to 8 damage instead with, um, you know, the same kind of thing. So why handers are just better than the, the halberdiers because they do 1 to 9 plus sweep. Sweep's a thing that basically means you never waste your damage. If you kill a target, leftover damage will then go to the next one. There's never any overkill with a sweep weapon, which is good. Um, our lord has that as well, so it's a very useful ability and new to the... Uh, uh, Conquest 5 uh, playthrough, or Conquest 5 game. So, Tower Guard are a hybrid unit. They have crossbows and a broadsword, so they're good at both melee and range. Uh, they've got an armor and a shield as well, so uh, very durable. Um, the iron costs uh, is the, the downside to them. Um, then you got Cavalrymen. These only come in a recruit value of 3, um, but we saw those. War Dogs are a little situational. I don't really know if there's a place for war dogs for me and my army, but um, they only have three hit points, no armor, no shield, and they do one to four damage. So they're like a weaker, uh, uh, what do you call it, weaker spearman. Uh, the only thing they do offer is at their half price, um, and uh, they're fast, so they'll get up to the combat quicker, uh, which might be useful if your uh, enemy's running a lot of ranged units, especially if these are on the flanks. They'll uh, they'll be able to wrap around and get to those ranged units if the enemy isn't well protected. But, um, yeah, if you have the gold, then you're, you're better off getting yourself some spearmen. But uh, we'll, we'll see on that one. And then you got your siege weapons. Uh, we'll go over those in more detail. Uh, the key thing I want to point out is ballistas are going to be extremely useful. These are all slow like your heavy infantry, so oftentimes when you build a siege force, that's when you start stocking the heavy infantry if you have the iron for it. Um, but, yeah, these are really good. Uh, of the two, though, if you have the gold, always build trebuchets over catapults. Uh, they're just more useful because uh, reasons we'll explain later. So, so that's your thing. Uh, Income-wise, we've got gold, 
iron and uh, we've got trade right now gold's the only thing we're bringing in so uh, we'll be using that I believe that is all she wrote so at this point we got to go out explore take things and uh, and basically become a uh, more powerful as a result so so we're gonna split forces here we got murder a crow so we need to kill that uh, let's use our movement wisely though Oh, I forgot they can be overrun. All right. Well, so be it. Okay. So we've explored. We've got a slinger and a bandit here. We're going to take care of that. Uh, those guys we can take care of as well. Um, so we're just going to basically capture everything we see around here and move our army up to capture more. So now we're up to 10 income. So Until those bandits move and take my stuff. Nope. They moved away. Perfect. Mantises, though, are pretty nasty. 17 hit points, one armor, um, and they have spiked arms, so they attack twice. But uh, luckily, our force of uh, knights is much stronger. Well, not much stronger, but they are stronger, so. Okay, well, there's a port. Uh, we're not going to be able to take that because of the ballista. There's a siege combat step that uh, I'll explain in more detail, but suffice to say, we're not attacking that for a bit. All right, battle on the farm. We didn't lose anything, but we'll show you what the battle looks like. So this is it. We move, and then we move two if we're fast, like they are and we are. And then we uh, all attack in our initiative order. So so their initiative is seven, so they're faster than anything we have, which is five and four. So that's why they're attacking first. But we attack harder because they're trying to break through our armor, and they're not doing a very good job of it. Um, so that was good. Perfect. Uh, we're already up to where we almost get a first recruit, so that's awesome. Uh, the bandits are showing up here, but that's fine. So let's move our forces there. Oh. Just doing some scouting. So, all right. So we've got that, that. Okay, so we'll do something here at the hamlet to show off uh, what we can do with that. <coughs> so we've got enough gold normally I would do a recruit but I want to show off a special power uh, oh yeah he's got powers as well as a high lord he can raise levies just like before swift justice uh, just like before and then raise for it just like before. So we're gonna hit the old raise for it so now you see the hamlet has walls uh, where it did not before and it makes an extra gold for us so that's fantastic um, our lord will come here and we're going to use our special powers to raise levies and now these guys will defend those walls for us so chances of bandits taking this are very slim um and then there's farm with a couple levies but i think we're going to take out the ogre and the ogre chief so we can get our first access to iron here um iron and gold fantastic so we'll do that and yeah it looks like something took our coastal hamlet oh and I believe that's it for our turn. All right, battle in a coal mine. We murdered them. I'll show you what that looks like. So these guys hit hard. They hit for 1 to 15 damage. Remember, that adds to the end die. Um, but they have 22 hit points, but no armor. So any damage they take is taken. And so that means that we're going to obliterate them with our archers. Yeah, you see, they just couldn't stand up to that. So, All right, so coal mine... There's the bandit we were expecting. You're stuck here for another turn because you converted the Mott and Bailey, but you're going to be protected from any attacks, so that's good. So you lose one of two ways. You lose by losing all your commanders, um, or you lose by losing your citadels, which are marked with these crowns. So this is the only citadel we have. So we're, we're taking a chance right now um, because of that. Um, but... We're well defended. We're in a good position with our uh, commander here and things like that. So I don't think we'll have any issues here for the time being. So, all right. Move up here. Yep. Bandit exact moved exactly where I wanted them to. So my lordship will move here. We're going to go ahead. So if you can raise a fort before you do levies, it's better because you usually get more. You see, we only got three guys there. Not the best. Um, but, you know, sometimes you can't. So, do that. Do, do, do. Uh-oh. 
My high lord died to a giant crab. Darn it, I wasn't expecting that. So giant crab has three armor as well and a lot more hit points and does one to 20 damage. So this is a, yeah, it just murdered him. And you notice it does one to 20 damage, but it did 33. So he rolled a crit, which is the 20, and then he rolled again, which was a 14 and murdered my guy. Probably more actually, because uh, armor and all, but oh well. That sucks, but not the end of the world. All right, so we'll kill the bandit and four slingers here. And then uh, we'll wait for a recruit offer. All right, so we did pretty well. I should probably check the message. Hit stats. Yeah, we murdered all five of them, so. All right. Man, giant crabs just hanging out. All right, I'm not as worried about it right now. So we're going to go and overrun this and take this farm because conscription's coming soon. And when conscription comes, uh, well, it'll be in, in, oh, it'll be the end of the world for them. So, All right, 10 archers for 70 gold. That's perfect. So archers aren't as good, again, uh, compared to longbowmen, but getting 10 of them for a discount, normally they're 50 gold for each five. So that's 100 gold. You're getting it for 70. Uh, and you're getting this because we have uh, the Baron's Castle here. We get occasionally what we call uh, special recruits. So this is a special option here. So uh, we're going to hit that. Um, so these guys have uh, the bows for range 5, 1 to 3 damage. And they fire every round. So very good for what we're doing right now. We're not going to get too far away because we're about to hit our recruitment point let's uh, head back actually we'll transfer those archers we'll leave a couple behind and it should go to another special recruit that would be nice but um so this is a captain we can go he's just a foot commander he doesn't do anything special and the crossbows would have been nice because uh, there's a discount even on the iron there but um, that's all right We'll come and take this, and then we should hit conscription, right? I always forget exactly when. Yeah, there we go. Yearly conscription, uh, so three knights and ten spearmen. So um, so now we get the knights here, uh, which are stronger than the cavalrymen because they're horse attacks as well. It's a trained horse now. Um, the broadsword, one to seven, and then lance charge, one to twelve. Three armor and a shield as well, so it's just a stronger version for sure. So um, that's the reason why I wanted to take this Hamlet because it gives us an extra um, recruit of a knight. So we'll do that. So now we got ourselves a pretty strong force. Uh, we'll leave just the two archers, just fine. Oh, and when you do take damage, you have a chance of getting uh, afflictions. These uh, are permanent damage unless you have some way to regenerate. So in this case, he has reduced magic resistance and increased morale because he's not so bright. He's gonna, he's less inclined to run. So, but he's less willing to resist magic. So, so minus two plus two. So, that can be hurtful against some spellcasters. So we'll see what happens there. All right, crab came and went, did his damage. All right, so now we get to go out and explore with our much larger army, as you can see here. So that's what we're gonna do now. Let's see all right cool market village um, I'm gonna set up my trade so when you trade um, basically every point of trade um, gives you one gold worth of product so iron is one to one so it's one gold per one iron so if I get a tr every trade point I get I'll spend my gold income to get the iron instead and I do need iron to get my troops so very useful ten swordsmen all right, so we're going to snag that. Now we have one, and it's trading for a plus iron, so that's very good. These seven guys are going to die, and I'm going to get a coal mine. Twelve dwarves. Dwarves are just tougher. They just have more armor, um, and they do pretty good damage. So one to eight. The standard dwarf does two armor and one to seven. Um, so they're pretty good. They also have shields. Um, but we'll be able to take them with our, our front line of cav. Uh, but first, we'll do the easier fight and get access to gold and iron. So, and boom. All right. Battle on a coal mine. So, we murdered them. I'll show you what it looks like. So, these are the pale ones. I'm, 
Uh, the last playthrough I did was Pale Ones here, so as you can see, this Cavern Guard, they do good damage. 1 to 9, they have 12 hit points and 2 armor. However, they have bad eyesight, so they miss 20% of the time. So, um, And they've got 3 of those. Their standard troop has 1 armor and a shield, and does 1 to 5 damage, so just an improved. Again, bad eyesight though. And then these guys are kind of uh, just trashed here, so... Murdered him. Okay. Uh, so, yeah, we'll go ahead and do these guys next. Um, do I do the. Let's not explore. Let's use our raised levies so that we have defense for the market village and then we'll crush into you. Uh, so, action points. You get three for your standard troops. Uh, we'll hit stats. We murdered them all. There's really no reason to watch that. Uh, you get. Action points. Three normally for your standard troops. My cab will actually have four, so my High Lord actually had four, which is why I was moving them around separately. Um, because he's fast. So, And then uh, if you have slow troops, you'll only get to move two. Uh, so what happens is if you had one action point, like I did, and you move into a place that needs two, um, it'll take it from your next move. So, so I had a full three. I went here. I only had one left. I can move on here, no problem. But now I only have two for the next round instead of the full three. So, um, And then if it snows, everything that has snow on it improves the cost by one. Um, and then, like I said, uh, if you have a commander with three, but then you have troops that only move two, it'll gray out one of them. So it'll let you know you can't use that for movement purposes. So, All right. Castle Unbreachable has itself a bear and four giant spiders. This is actually not... A bad thing the the bite is is definitely terrible um, 28 hit points is pretty bad too but I mean with the army we got we, we should be able to destroy it so let's do it get ourselves a, another castle here all right so let's view this battle so since they don't have any ranged attacks they're not holding the walls they're also animals so um, so we're just going to uh, basically be able to advance up. The bear won't be able to fight with these guys. Um, we should be able to murder them with all our ranged attacks. So, oh yeah, they do have one armor though, so that's something to keep in mind. But uh, and then their poison will affect my guys if it can pierce. So in that case, he died uh, from poison. So I did end up losing two cavalrymen, but not bad to get myself another castle. So now I have another recruit point here, so I can actually buy troops here, which I do want to do. Uh, probably more... Yeah, definitely more longbow. So grab them. Uh, we'll transfer all of those in, and then we'll leave a couple regular archers to defend against walking guys. The abandoned mine with kobolds. Uh, this thing breathes fire in a cone 5, so that means it'll affect 5 squares. Uh, do a 1 to 9 fire damage, um, which can be problematic. And it bites for 1 to 12. It's got 32 hit points, but our knight should be just fine. The rest of these are fairly trashed here. See, two, two hit points. It has one armor. That's weird. I didn't know that they had an armor. But anyways, they do 1 to 3 damage because they're smaller and weaker. So, um, Red Kobold Chief, same, just a leader. They do have access to a shaman, though, with pyromancy, so yeah, that is probably not worth taking. They're on an abandoned mine, so it gives one iron a turn, but uh, otherwise it won't do anything else. So we're not going to worry about that. That's a beanstalk. That's a way to get up to the clouds, which is another plane. Uh, we'll worry about that later. Can I use... I can't raise levies there. Okay, no problem. But now I could relocate my manor there if I wanted to for 100 gold, and then uh, this will be where my conscripts show up. Um, ah, look at that giant crab. He's just, just threatening my stuff. All right, and then we have a town here. Uh, I think we can take out that town with the archery we have and with the troops we have. So, um, and the town itself is uh, four gold, a trade, and it's uh, fairly defensible. So yeah, let's do it. Well, I'm, I'm guessing we'll lose about three troops. Nope, two. Cavalrymen and a knight, uh, because the archers kept shooting, shooting, shooting. And then he probably did some damage with his initial attack. 
Yep, see, he murdered my uh, guy there, so that's where the knight went. It is what it is. But the Baron can now use his special powers to raise levies, and that'll defend our town from any weirdness, like this High Lord and three knights that want to come up and probably take my farm. Um, this is the Captain and Two Swordsmen, so yeah, let's get rid of that. That's a bunch of kobolds as well. Uh, so the kobolds are different colors, have different elements. So uh, these are white kobolds, which have lightning. And so that's nasty because it's 1 to 7 damage, armor negating. So it ignores all my armor, and it does 5 bounces. So it'll just basically bounce all around and kill my troops. Um, it's on a coal mine, but we don't really need that coal mine that badly right now. So... Um. All right, I think we're in good shape here. Battle in a hamlet. We murdered them. All right. Let's go ahead and raise a fort here, and then we'll raise levies once we uh, have control again. So now we have a Mott and Bailey. All right, we do have a captain we can recruit, so I'm going to go ahead and do that. Um... That way we have somebody who can uh, transfer troops once they come up and we'll be able to use them. So we're going to sentry you for now. We got some wandering uh, tribals coming through. And our lord can't move because he basically took six action points to do that ability. Uh, as you can see, six movement. So it took away uh, not only his current turn movement, but next turn's movement as well. So let's go ahead and raise levies. There we go. So uh, those guys will defend our uh, Mott and Bailey. So, All right. Uh, with that, we're going to go ahead and call it here. As always, if you enjoyed the video, please like, comment, and subscribe. Again, this series is going to be uh, pre-recorded, so um, you know, definitely leave the comments. I'm going to be reading them as, uh, as I finish up my days at Gen Con, where I'm going to be at. Um, but uh, you know, we'll, uh, once we finish this series, we'll go back to the normal, where I'll broadcast, and any comments you leave, I'll be able to react to and do the usual naming of commanders and things like that. So, so with that, I will catch you guys next time.